Hey guys, so this has been requested a few times since I hauled this book way back many moons ago last summer. I had requests from different people to do uh, a book review on The English Patient by Michael Ondaatje. I think that's how you say his name. I decided that I was going to take it one step further and do a book to movie comparison since this is a movie because this is the movie cover. The movie is based off of the book, but I figure I should start uh, giving you some background what the book is about before I launch into the comparison. This story takes place towards the end of World War II, 1944, at least the majority of it does. There's some flashbacks, but we'll get to those in a minute. There's four characters that you really follow in this book. There is Hannah, who is a nurse, and she is taking care of the English patient which is what the book is named after. The English patient is a man who doesn't remember who he is. His plane crashed in the desert. He was completely burned all over his body and Hannah is taking care of him uh, for the time being. They know that he's going to die, but obviously they're trying to give him as much comfort as possible until that time comes. Then there's a man named David Caravaggio. Caravaggio knows Hannah from back in the day. And then finally there is Kip, who sort of happens upon the house because he is working uh, in the army defusing uh, bombs that haven't quite gone off yet. So we have these four characters and they all come together at this one place in Italy where Hannah is taking care of the English patient and we see how their lives sort of intertwine, um, what happens between Hannah and Kip, Hannah and Caravaggio, uh, how the English patient interacts with all of these characters, how they become close to him and also reveals more of the English patient's past to figure out who he is and how he ended up having his plane crash in the desert. It also shows some of the adjustment back to normal life. Although the war was not over uh, completely for most of this book, uh, there is where they are, there's no more fighting anymore. So it's them sort of coming to the realization that this war is going to end and they're going to have to go back to society having seen all of these horrible things and really changed as people because all of them have played a part in World War II. So how does this translate into film? Well, Right off the bat, I can tell you that this won the Best Picture for 1997 at the Oscars, so it was obviously a well-liked film and very well made. The film was directed by Anthony Minghella. I guess that's how you say his last name. What is it with difficult last names in this video? Anyway, I didn't even realize that there were so many famous people in this movie. We have Juliette Binoche playing Hannah, and I love Juliette Binoche. She's one of my favorite actresses. Chocolat, anyone? Rafe Fiennes is playing the English patient. Naveen Andrews, aka Saeed from Lost, plays Kip, and Willem Dafoe plays Caravaggio. There are also a couple other actors playing lesser scene characters. Colin Firth is in a role as well, so yeah, a lot of big people in this movie. The big similarity was really the tone of the movie. The tone of the book is very serious, sort of delving into these people's lives and it's in depth, focused, intense. The movie is also like that. You get into these lives, you really kind of get a picture of the inner minds of these people, sort of the suffering that they've gone through and their psychological state at this point in their lives. It is also kind of confusing in, in both places. In the book, sometimes it's a little hard to understand why somebody's doing what they're doing. And in the movie, it can sometimes be strange. Somebody will just burst out crying all of a sudden and you could sort of understand where they're coming from. But at the same time, you think, would I really have that reaction? It's a good and a bad thing because it was one of those things in the book that made me uneasy and sort of not quite understand what was going on all the time. I also like the fact that the passion between the English patient and when we look into his past, this woman named Catherine that he is in love with, I found the passion more understandable in the movie and I liked it better and how it was told in that way. There are some seriously passionate scenes between them and I don't mean like in bed, I mean just at points where they're like just you could tell that they're completely in love with each other and it's almost over it is kind of overwhelming but it makes me believe it more than I did in the book so I guess I'm okay with it. <laughs> One of the things that I didn't quite know how they were going to do in the movie was the English patient as I said is, is burned and when he is first found he is like completely burned black so his skin is black and is continually described in the book as being 
black and painful and, and whatnot. And I didn't know how they were gonna have him look so destroyed and in pain while still making him believable as a, as a character because usually when people get burned, they don't usually turn that black and live. Like their skin doesn't usually get that bad. So in the movie, in the beginning when his plane first crashes and he is found by some people in the desert, he is all black. But by the time we see him with Hannah, you can tell that it's been a little bit and his skin is now just, it's uh, lighter again, but it still has that burned look. I was wondering how they were gonna do that and they did it in a, in a way that I found more realistic. So I, I liked that as well. It wasn't as, oh my God, this guy looks like he's gonna fall apart any second. Another thing that I liked about the film is there was less strange symbolism. I guess like you could say it was symbolism. In the book, there were a couple awkward moments where I was reading and I was like, why did the character do that? There's this one part where Hannah is pouring milk at the table and Kip and some of the other characters are standing there and they're sort of having a, it's not quite an argument, but they're having a really heated discussion about something and things are starting to get emotional. And Hannah just is pouring the milk and then she just starts pouring it over Kip's arm and Kip doesn't move. And I'm sitting there reading this going, what is this supposed to symbolize? Who does that? <laughs> no one just starts pouring milk over someone's arm and just dramatically stands there. What is this symbolism that Andachi is trying to show us? And that was absent from the film and I was grateful for that because I think it would have been very, very strange <laughs> to see and try to understand what the f Some changes that I didn't like, Kip's character is much less fleshed out. In the book, Kip is probably my favorite because you learn about his backstory. Kip is from India, Kip is his nickname, and he started working in as a sapper, you know, diffusing bombs and whatnot, and hearing his backstory and some of the in-depth time that we spend following his character and him taking care of the bombs and, and trying to diffuse them, I found that really interesting. And his character was not that prominent in the movie. There is a bit of a relationship between him and Hannah and I'd say that that wasn't that definitely wasn't taken nearly as far as it was in the book and it didn't end on the same note even though in the book it was very symbolism blah 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 I really still wish they had spent more time with his character and and really fleshed him out more and another thing a lesser thing is that Hannah of being played by Juliette Binoche she has a little bit of an accent because Juliette Binoche is French and Hannah in the book is from Toronto in Canada and so they decided to change it and say that Hannah was from Montreal which I thought was a smart move on their part. The only thing being Hannah is supposed to be 20 years old and Juliette Binoche is definitely not 20 in this film. She's at least in her 30s at this point. She is still a beautiful actress and she is playing this character. They just sort of aged her up a bit. I would have liked if they if they kept her younger because I feel like the part the fact that she is so young and innocent in terms of what she's seen in this world before going to war and working as a nurse uh, really plays a part in this book. But at the same time, I really appreciated having those actors that we did have. In conclusion, I uh, decided to give The English Patient uh, three and a half out of five stars. It was a interesting story set in World War II, which I always enjoy, with some very um, well-developed characters, but I just found the symbolism and the tone of it almost too extreme for my liking. As for the movie, I think I would give it four stars. I think I liked it a bit more because it didn't have that crazy symbolism, but they did cut out a lot of Kip's character and that makes me sort of sad. I like that they did spend a lot of time following the English patient and his affair with Catherine and that backstory, that was very interesting and I, and I liked seeing that on screen, beautiful desert shots, but yeah, I'm gonna go with four out of five stars for that. Well, since this is a very popular book and a very, po very popular movie, let me know what you thought. Are you going to pick up the book if you've seen the movie, debating about it? I think you should give it a shot. I can't promise that you'll love it, but some people may really, really like the way it's written. It just wasn't totally what I enjoyed. As always, all of the links are in the doobly-doo. We got our Twitter, we got our book depository, and we got our Goodreads accounts if you want to friend us or follow us on there. So thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you later.